we have scoured the depths of the streaming giant to bring you our top 10 supernatural series that promise to transport you into worlds brimming with mystery, magic, and mayhem. So, get ready to be enchanted by tales that blur the line between reality and the extraordinary. Your waking world is shaped by dreams. Dreams and nightmares that I create and which I must control. Sandman follows the story of Dream, the personification of dreams, who upon escaping after decades of imprisonment by a mortal wizard, sets out to reclaim his property. Throughout the season, the focus was on developing Dream, who is a character that doesn't always listen and does what he pleases. He's confident in his power, but he also realizes that his decisions may not align with others' dreams over time, and under certain circumstances, he's self-aware of the consuming power he holds. I appreciate how the story slowly shifts and moves from one aspect to another while maintaining a high level of detail. Lastly, I liked how they introduced the different entities and their desires and pleasures. Each one was unique, and their intentions were portrayed extremely well. Personally, I enjoyed the series. It has magic, a compelling story about desire and destiny, and it explores the hopes and dreams of its characters. I recommend giving it a watch. Have sweet dreams! Nightmares do not belong in the waking world. Oh, it turns out I fit right in. Next, Parasite the Grey. I've already seen the Japanese live action version, but this one, it totally blows it out of the water. It's way better and way more impressive than the originals. The storyline hooks you in and seriously gives you chills with its creepy, gory scenes. Those parasites are so twisted, yet strangely realistic. Honestly, if I hadn't seen how they did it behind the scenes, I'd swear those creatures were real. The way the relationship between the parasite and the host evolved into something mutually beneficial was handled extremely well, even better than in the Maxim. Jion So Ni's performance as the conflicted protagonist stands out especially, drawing us into her journey of self-discovery amid all the chaos. Props to the crew for spending years perfecting the editing. It really paid off. And I love how they took the manga and spun a whole new story from it. It was a smart move that sets it apart from the usual adaptations. Lock and Key is outstanding, subtle, and mind-blowing. Dropping hints that leave you craving for more episodes. Adapted from Joe Hill's famous comic series, with some major differences, it's definitely worth binge-watching. It's truly mysterious, with so many clues that make the adventure exhilarating. I found myself wanting to hop on that key house roller coaster with its magical keys and demons. The storyline feels fresh and new, carving out its own unique space. The characters are relatable, especially the siblings, whose realistic relationships unfold beautifully. There's emotional depth and disconnect at first, especially with their mother, but I love their individual bonds with their father. And can we talk about the house? It's a magnificent art piece, huge and marvelous. The interior is mind-blowing, filled with secrets. I highly recommend checking out this series. It's always there. Whatever you think you understand about those keys, you don't. Dead Boy Detective starts off quite straightforwardly. Allow me to welcome you to the Dead Boy Detective Agency. We help ghosts resolve their mysteries. Ghosts who cannot let go. Within the first 10 minutes, they give away a lot of narrative clues outright. I'm really glad I didn't turn it off though. The characters are incredibly lovable and funny, yet they deal with genuine hardships. They're all complex and unexpected, making it hard to pick a favorite. The depth of friendship between Charles and Edwin, and how it evolves with the introduction of Crystal, and their journey outside of London, is absolutely brilliant. There's a comforting campiness to dead boys that softens the grittiness often found in adult fantasy shows, which usually turns me off from the genre. It's everything I wanted in a show and more. If you get the chance, definitely watch this show. It's worth it. Even if it's scary, 
and the odds are bad, and we might die horrifically. Nico, that was amazing. Thank you. <laughs> oh, did you guys know zombies are real? The Magicians is one of my absolute favorite shows in the genre on Netflix, based on my all-time favorite book series. Let me start by saying, if you've watched the show, you have to read the books. And if you've read the books, you have to watch the show. It is here that our story begins. A land of magic. Am I hallucinating? If you were, how would asking me help? I know this isn't a review for the books, but seriously, they're fantastic. Lev Grossman is a genius, and it's disheartening when people dismiss it as a knockoff of Narnia or Harry Potter. As far as I know, Grossman drew inspiration from these classics, which is entirely valid. I adore all the characters. While the books are quite Quentin-centric, the show gives depth and complexity to all the main characters, and I think it's done beautifully. It covers everything from magic and romance, to sharp wit and profound connections. I truly believe the writers pour their hearts into this series, because the love and care shine through every episode. Quentin Coldwater. There you are. School Spirits. Don't let the name fool you. It might sound like a Disney Kids show, but this one's definitely not. Bye, everyone calls me Maddie. Welcome to the Split River High Afterlife Support Group. Would you like to tell us a little about yourself? How'd you die? When I started watching it, I had pretty average expectations, thinking it might just be another high school drama to kill time. But boy was I wrong. It turned out to be incredibly gripping and addictive. I ended up binge watching the whole thing in just two days. I was also worried it might be cringy like Riverdale, given it's a supernatural teen show, but it kept things simple with its concepts. It stayed true to its theme of afterlife and the dead versus the living, making it really fun and interesting to watch. I appreciate how diverse the characters are, like the jock from the 80s, the gay boy from the 90s, and Claire the popular girl. The plotline about Maddie's mom struggling with alcoholism added depth too. Among all the whodunits, this series stands out all on its own. Maybe it's a good thing you don't remember. I found something. Evil is one of the best supernatural serial dramas. The writing, direction, score, and acting are all top-notch, and subtly creepy, reminding me of the days when Hitchcock was a household name. I like the sound of a woman screaming. Orson? It's suspenseful and lets your imagination run wild, which is far creepier than today's jump scares and gore. I really appreciate the skeptical angle taken towards seemingly supernatural events. It's a refreshing take on a genre that often falls into cheesy and ridiculous territory. I never thought we'd see this level of storytelling, let alone see it achieve the rating success it deserves. But I'm happy to be proven wrong. If you can only fit one new show into your schedule this year, and you love horror, mystery, or thrillers, Evil is the perfect choice. I can't recommend Evil enough to fans of serial dramas who remember the excitement of watching something like the first season of Lost and eagerly waiting for the next episode. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. I binged all four seasons of Manifest in just a week, and I almost didn't start it to begin with. Excuse me, what exactly is the problem? The problem, ladies and gentlemen, is you've all been missing, presumed dead for five and a half years. Seriously, this show is so worth watching. If you're looking for something different and intriguing, look no further. I appreciate how the story is so diverse. They don't limit themselves to just scientific explanations, but also delve into mythology and religion, which is refreshing to see. Even if you're not very religious, you'll still enjoy the show. Trying to merge science and religion alone is not an easy feat, but I think it's handled very well. I know that was one of the showrunner's main goals from the beginning, so consider it mission accomplished. No one can explain what happened to us. Some people called it impossible, others called it a miracle. All I know is whatever force brought us all here had no interest in being investigated. This was just the beginning. As someone that hasn't read the books, I can say that Lockwood & Co. does a fantastic job of gradually introducing viewers to its world. It's terrible the world's come to this. 
each episode reveals more about the setting and the unique personalities of each character, making it easy for anyone, even those unfamiliar with the source material, to get fully immersed in the story. I was thoroughly impressed by the show and highly recommend it to others. The plot kept me on edge with plenty of unexpected twists, which I found quite refreshing. I was also surprised by the subtle romance aspect. The chemistry between the actors playing Lockwood and Lucy is palpable, and as the plot unfolds, you can see just how much they care for each other. The actors do an exceptional job of conveying their feelings through subtle glances and involuntary touches, making their relationship believable and captivating. I strongly recommend people watch it, and I hope it gets renewed. Death is coming. When Lockwood and Cohen, you, me, and George. My friend loved Uncanny Counter, and he's never watched anything with subtitles before. He usually hates them. So, when someone who dislikes subs enjoys a show with them, you know it's worth watching. As for me, I absolutely loved this show. It was amazing, one of the best things I've ever seen. Initially, I didn't have high expectations, but the characters quickly pulled me in. You can see each character develop throughout the show, especially So Mun and Hana. The ending caught me off guard because of something So Mun said to his friends earlier. No spoilers here, but it was still great. I've rewatched this show so many times that I had to stop myself, because it's just that amazing. If you don't trust my opinion, know that it got renewed one day after the finale and broke OCN records. If you're a big fan of fantasy or the actors, I highly recommend watching this show. So, what do you think of our picks? Do you think we missed out on anything? If so, let us know in the comments. Also, if you agree with our picks, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button and share it with your fellow cinema enthusiasts.